So hopefully today I'm going to help you save some money by convincing you why this $800 drone is better than a $1400 drone. First, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to tell you a story, if you will say. Um, so I first bought the Phantom 4 Advance when I graduated high school. And at the time I bought it, it was one of the best drones out, and I thought I was going to do so much uh, cool stuff with it. But for how good a stuff you could get, um, the, the size of the actual physical size of the drone was just uh, a real downside. Like the Phantom 4 is a huge drone, even the backpack is huge, and it's actually I have it right here. I mean, look at this thing. Who? Ooh, who needs a backpack this big and the only thing you could fit in it is literally your drone and maybe a small camera like this is just ridiculous like if I wanted to bring cameras wrong I'd literally be carrying around like two heavy backpacks one with just the drone and one with all my other camera equipment because like you can't leave your house without your camera equipment like that's just crazy and in reality, I think I only flew the drone like eight times out of the three years that I had it for. And I didn't really get any um, good stuff or like cinematic videos because I used to just keep it on automatic because like I didn't really take the time to learn how to fly it because it was such a hassle. So it'd be on automatic and the ISO would be like bumped. That'd be the first thing that'd be changed is the ISO. So it'd be bumped up when and then everything would just look super grainy and it was like <laughs> shooting with like a crappy camera while you're in the sky. But because the drone was so big, um, you had to set it up. So it took like five to ten minutes to like put the, on the propellers, um, take off, you know, the gimbal clamps, uh, the controller, which was like this big as well, which to set up as well. So it just really didn't seem um, worth it and the amount of time it took to set it up. Because like you're going to miss your shot waiting that five to ten minutes. But this drone is also insanely loud and it just seems like it's really unnecessarily loud at some points. Um, like about two years ago, um, when one of the fires happened here in California, I went down to photograph it and I thought, you know, why not bring my drone to get an aerial view of kind of showing how big and how much um, it destroyed. So like while I was there, I was trying to get, you know, good shots while also being respectful because like people were there and they just lost like everything. So you have, you have to be respectful of that, obviously. But so it was like, I was this person with like this giant, like huge white ass drone that's like super loud and super obnoxious and annoying while like you're trying to grieve for your like everything you own. And it was just like, I had to be so quick and like, cause I was like, I don't want people, you know, to get notice it or like, you know, come up to me and like get mad cause obviously they would have a right to. And because I was trying to be so quick, I didn't end up getting anything like worth it for the amount of hassle. I was putting myself through but for all those reasons i just listed of why i didn't like the phantom 4 are the exact opposite um reasons of why i love this drone so much like look at this this is the size of the maverick air like look how small and perfect it is like it's literally the size of my phone basically and you can easily fit this in any camera bag and sometimes not even notice it's there it also only takes like 30 seconds to set up uh, because all you have to do is unfold stuff, you know, the propellers are already attached. Literally just unfold and then take off the uh, gimbal clamp and you're all set to fly. It's literally that fucking simple. So I do like the quickness of the setup because like if you're trying to get, you know, the shot, like the sun is setting or rising or it's like, you don't have a lot of time. Like this is really easy and you're most definitely going to get the shots more likely than you would having to set up a drone for like five to ten minutes. Now, while this thing um, is still um, kind of loud, it's uh, definitely a lot quieter than the Phantom was. Um, but because it's also so small and I got the black one, when this is high up enough, um, you can't hear it. And also, it just looks like a bird. So it's like people aren't going to notice like this really that much or pay a second glance to it. 
And the great thing about the Maverick is it does have the same photo and video capacities as the Phantom 4. Like this little thing, which is one f like one fourth of the size of the Phantom, shoots 4K video. So it also comes with this little nice protective carrying case. And then this is the size of the remote as well, which is literally like the size of my phone again. Um, but yeah, so now when I'm traveling, I'm actually looking forward to bringing this along. Instead of it being seen as a hassle, it's more of like, I can't wait to fly it. Now I did buy the Maverick Air about a couple weeks before the Maverick Air 2 came out. So if anything, um, that just shows you kind of how bad my luck is. Um, but I am so happy with the one that I have. Because, um, but even though the 2 does, uh, you know, obviously fly longer and can travel further away from you, like, you know, every upgrade is with the drone. Um, I'm so happy with mine because honestly, um, it's a little bit bigger than the Mavic Air and it's also doesn't look as good. Like they try to make it more look like, you know, the bigger like pro versions of the Maverick. Um, and I just don't find that, you know, as appealing as, you know, like the sleek black look that I have. But for the things that I shoot and the amount of free space I have in my camera bag, the Mavic Air is the perfect drone for me. And that's really all that matters when buying any type of equipment.